significant difference, yeah, or that there is a difference. Once again, like in our previous videos, we reject the null only when the significance of our test is less than the the, the, the alpha level uh, that we've set at the start of our test, which is in this case was 0 0.05, the 5% level. And the rhyme goes something like this, if the p is low, the null must go. Okay, so when it comes to exercise, the p-value associated with that ANOVA is 0 0.72 approximately. Yeah? Okay. Now, 0 0.72 is not less than 0 0.05, and as such, there's insufficient evidence for us to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, there's insufficient evidence to suggest that the performance okay, of participants is different across the groups, where the group represents the type of, the type of exercise regime that was undertaken. In other words, there's no evidence to suggest that the vigorous exercise regime guys outperformed the passive guys or even the leisurely or the moderate or that the moderate outperformed the leisurely or the passive and all those possible combinations. Yeah, okay. So there's no evidence to suggest that. What about with respect to the drink? Okay, when we look at the ANOVA results for the drink. Once again, the default position or the null hypothesis is that there's no difference across the performance of individuals, irrespective of the drink that they have drank. In other words, whether it's Diet Coke, regular Coke or Red Bull, that the Diet Coke guys, okay, that there's no difference on, on with respect to the average of this distribution compared to the average of the regular Coke or even compared to the Red Bull or even possibly the regular Coke compared to the Red Bull and all the possible combinations that we could have. So the null hypothesis in this case is that there's no difference uh, uh, irrespective of the drink that you have taken before you ran the 400 meters, yeah? Okay? The alternative is that there is a difference. Now, once again, the rhyme is if the P is low, the null must go. And actually what we have here is we have a P value. It's written actually in scientific notation here. It's 2.021 E minus 15. That basically represents 2.0 2.021 multiplied by 10 to the minus 15, which is 14 zeros in front of this 2, and then we have the decimal place. So it's like 0 0.00000000000002021. I think that was 14 zeros there. Okay, So actually, that's a very, very small p-value which is less than 0 0.05 and as such there is evidence at the 5% significance level to suggest that there is a difference in the performance of individuals okay on this 400 meters run okay okay uh, depending on the type of drink that they've drank before they have undertaken the run okay uh, so that is that's important there is a difference there so that's that's one thing that we found that there is a difference okay now the next thing, which is probably the more interesting, the more interesting uh, statistics that we have here, okay, is the interaction effect, okay? Okay, when we consider the groups passive with Diet Coke, when we consider leisurely with, with regular Coke or leisurely with Red Bull and all of those possible groupings, when we consider all of these groups and the interactions, okay, the question is whether there's significant differences across those groups. The null hypothesis being that all of those possible groups are the same, the alternative being that there is a difference. In other words, if there is a difference, it's saying that there is an interaction between one of the levels of measurement on our independent variable compared to the levels of measurement on the other independent variable. Okay? Now, in this situation here, once again, the rhyme is, if the p is low, the null must go. And in this case, we can actually see that our p-value is 0 0.82 which tells us that there's insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, there's insufficient evidence to suggest that there actually is an interaction okay, between the levels of measurement uh, on our independent variables. Okay, so guys, uh, I know that was uh, probably a, a lot to take on board, but the main thing just to keep in mind is that when we when we undertake an ANOVA, a two-factor with replication, the difference between a two-factor with replication and a two-factor without replication is is that with the replication scenario, we have more than one measurement, yeah, or observation in the pairings that are associated with our independent variables. 
Okay, that's the first thing to keep in mind. And in this case, we have six for each possible pairing, which is a balanced design. Okay, uh, the second thing to keep in mind is that there's three important outputs with respect to the ANOVA table. There's the single factor ANOVA with respect to the levels of measurement uh, for our first independent variable. Then there's the single factor ANOVA with respect to the levels of measurement for the second independent variable. And then there's another, let's say, single factor ANOVA, albeit we have this sort of interaction. Okay? There's this other ANOVA result okay, where we consider the possible pairings of the two levels of each level of measurement on our independence uh, with each other. And whether there is a significant difference across those particular groups, in this case, there's no, there's no evidence to suggest that there's an interaction between, between uh, possible pairings. Okay, guys, uh, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I hope this video uh, was somewhat helpful and was somewhat intuitive. Okay, so once again, uh, thank you for your time.